And Mr. Patrice, we've got major problems. Perhaps I should send some accountants. Hey, Pat! You already sent me an accountant! Perhaps you should calm yourself, Salvatore. We are lucky to get the 5%. Do it today, or Patrice will have to send some people to do it for you. I am the Paisley Hyde Death Stalker. I walk on the air! Pull everybody off the streets! Now! Numbers, guys! Bag men! We gotta rumble! Everybody! It's not even complicated. DeMont is working our territory, and the deal we have with him is substandard, yes? 5%? The next thing you know, we're getting complaints from partners who are stepping up for the whole 15%. Now, what should we tell them, Sonny? Should we say we're doing it because he's tougher than we are, yes? No, Sid, that's not what we tell them. What we tell them is to mind their own business, otherwise we're gonna start cracking heads. You don't know what we go through down there with Cecil DeMont. It's like doing business on the moon. Patrice wants you to try harder. Now, he's talked to me about it, and I said I'd clean it up. You gonna do that from your phone booth at the athletic club? Excuse me, sir, but uh, Lorenzo's clothes just got here. They came by air freight. What do you want me to do with them? Leave it here, sweetheart. I haven't figured out where to park the kid yet. Do it today, or Patrice will have to send some people to do it for you. Pete. Ah, get oh, them bones! <laughs> You're going down. Yeah, you couldn't hit the ground with both feet. Finally get a chance to give you a bat. Uh oh. Give me some room. Okay, come on, kids. He can't do this to me. <laughs> Get back at you for this. Oh, yeah, what are you gonna do, Pete? Tell mom? Yeah, <laughs> tell mom. <laughs> oh, it's hard to believe you two are brothers. <laughs> yeah, I admit it is kind of hard to believe with uh, Pete losing his hair and his physique and everything and me holding up so well. What? Holding up well. Okay, who's your next drawer up there? Come uh, on, hey. You and your brother are very close, aren't you? Yeah, we're close. He used to hear my secrets. Now he hears my confessions. It's pretty much the same thing. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why do you work over at that hotel? Yeah, it's a job, you know. Pays pretty good. Beats pushing a hack or busting tables. My mom showed me this article about Mr. Steelgrave. They said that he's like some underworld boss and that... Look, Vinny, it's just been a long time for me. You know, after Alex, I just can't make that mistake with you. I just can't. Hey, Gina, Mr. Steelgrave owns a hotel. I work at the hotel. I do dumb stuff. Do stuff like, uh, check how much lettuce there is on Cobb Salad Day, how much veal on veal piccata day, stuff like that. I like to in, in charge some of the vendors, that's all. All right? All right. Good, I eat. Yeah, 
was great, all the fathers getting in the dunk like that, huh? Yes, Monsignor Vintelli had a hard night thinking on that before he <laughs> said yes. <laughs> Vinny, you kind of like Gina Augustina, huh? Yes, Father Taranova, I kind of like Gina Augustina. She told me you were taking her out again tonight. Don't make a mistake, Vinny. Not with her, OK? Look, Pete, I really like her. I'm not going to hurt her. She's kind of like walking wounded. After Alex, she spent most of her time just staying home. Finally, she started coming here. It's been two years getting her to where she is. Come on, Pete. I'm just telling you, OK? She's been hurt. She's very special. And you're packing more than your share of backstory. So don't make a mistake, OK? OK. See you later. Whew. What the hell's in here? It smells like dog shampoo. <laughs> That's Lorenzo's stuff. I had the boys bring it up to your place till I figure out where to park the kid. You know, I got an extra bedroom. You can put him in here if you want. You don't mind? Yeah, it's only for the summer, Vinny. Sonny, come on. You didn't tote this thing up here just to let it perfume my living room. <laughs> OK, you got me. I was hoping you'd be generous. As usual, you didn't disappoint me. Oof. There's got to be a bottle of broken cologne in here. You know how these gindaloons are from Sicily? They bathe in this junk. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy, I haven't seen Lorenzo since he was five, maybe six years old. I was his big, tough 16-year-old uncle. Kid cried when his old man got deported back to Palermo. <laughs> he was a Yankee fan. Yeah. yeah. yeah like the Flintstones. He was an all-American boy. He gets in at 5.30. So maybe you want to come down here with me. We pick him up, we'll take him out to dinner after the Cecil DeMont thing. Uh, I can't, Sonny. I got a thing out tonight. Gina Augustina, right? We'll take her with. Oh, Sonny, she's a neighborhood girl. Hey, Vinny, is it me? No, oh, Sonny, it's not you. Because I'll be nice. I'll be Uncle Sonny. There'll be no wise talk. Everything will be nice. Let me think about it, OK? So what time is this Cecil DeMont thing? 4.30. It's a mistake, you know. Mm. I know. We're meeting him in a rib joint called Backstreet. We're not looking for nothing but talk, but I want you to watch my back, Vinny, OK? This guy's got heavy muscle, and they're all not wrapped too tight in the head. I don't know what DeMont feeds them, but it's causing brain damage. Be right there with you, son. If these Moulinians so much as shift their weight, I want you to start pumping. You go for DeMont first. You got it, son. They come this way. Two machines. And there's a bean shop over on the left. Go around. I want to cruise the whole block. All right, now, this is Jackson on the inside. They're going around. Y'all stay alert. We'll be ready, Mr. Jackson. We're going to be seeing a lot of cops around here once we open up season. Yeah, I know that's a fact. The cops love to see Mr. Steelgrave lying face down with his eyes looking up, staring at the inside of his pointy head. You know, they're probably going to give us a party. Going to make it Cecil DeMont Day. <laughs> hmm. There's nobody on the streets with nowhere to park, except over there. I don't know, Sonny. I don't like it. Stay alert, you guys. Tell Nolan Hart, 
that we at war with them gunners. It's starting now. Ain't no stopping. This is going to be bad for business, Cecil. I am the Paisley Eyed Death Stalker. I walk on the air. All who see me cry and wonder. Get on the phone. You tell Colin Joey, I want them to pull everybody off the street. Now! Numbers, guys! Bag men! We gotta rumble! Everybody! On the line. You guys want to excuse me? It's a clean line? It's always best to be careful, Salvatore. I'm calling to tell you we've got major problems with the coconut salesman in Ducktown. Perhaps I should send some accountants. They look at the ledges, maybe find what's wrong. Hey, Pat! You already sent me an accountant! He's mowing my carpets. He keeps it up, and I'm going to send him back to your dress for church. Perhaps you should calm yourself, Salvatore. Yeah, I'm working on that. In the meantime, you tell Sid his Eisenhower days ended this afternoon in front of a rib joint in Ducktown. I wouldn't keep the sales force off the streets for too long. A lot of our partners will squirm. We're very profit-oriented. Yeah, right. Nice talking to you, too. He's pushing in on me. Cat's claws are starting to show. It's gotta be him. Hey, Lorenzo, it's Uncle Sonny. Hey, 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 Lorenzo, it's Uncle Sonny. Hey, kid, what's the matter? Don't you remember 16 Yankee games in one summer? Yeah. It's good seeing you, Uncle Sonny. Hey, come on. All right, all right. How about this kid, eh? 15 years in Sicily, and he talks like one of us. It's not Tibet. We get American television. Yeah, 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 right. The Flintstones. Yabba dabba doo! Yeah. Let's get out of here. Maybe you'll grow on us. You guys, come down here and pick me up in these cars. Hey, kid. Hey, kid. Come here. Come here. Maybe you should ease up some, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You're right, Uncle Sonny. You got it. OK. I got a restaurant I thought I'd take you for dinner. We're all going to go. I'll introduce you on the way, eh? Who are these guys? We're having some problems, kid. Nothing we can't solve. So for a while, we're going to travel in groups. It sounds like fun. Nice place, Uncle Sonny. You like it, huh? I like it. All right. We're going to have a good time. I like it a lot. Hey, no, Who's this? I figured, what the hell? Sonny, I told you she's a neighborhood girl. I told her you wanted to take her out to dinner, man. I sent her flowers. I got a car for her. Vinny, what's the problem? The problem is she's not right for this. The problem is we got Cecil roaming around looking to wreck us. Not for nothing, Sonny. The problem is you didn't tell me. Cecil's not going to find us over here on the New York side. You got something you want to say to me, Vinny? You want to take Gina and go to cars outside? Your call, pal. All right, I'm sorry. I'm still working off the adrenaline from this afternoon. I'm a little edgy. Yeah. Hey, we all? <laughs> huh? See that? Hmm. As promised, I deliver to this table one Vinnie Terranova. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Anytime. All right, let's see here. This, this good-looking kid, this is my nephew from Sicily, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, this is Heidi Kesselman. 
Mm -hmm. She works at the counting office down at the casino, so don't bruise her hand or her mind, for that matter, because it could cost us money. Hi, right, baby. And this is Chris Dimitri, Lorenzo. Hello, Chris. You know Vinny. And this is uh, Gina Augustina from the neighborhood, right? Right. Hello. It's Vinny's steady girl. All right, Gus. Come on, do the right thing over here. Don't make me look bad. Take care of us. What's everybody drinking cocktails for? We get some champagne. So listen, you guys got to try the calamari here. And the clams. The clams sweat. They're so good. Mm. Heidi, you look great tonight. Thank you. You don't look so bad yourself. Mm, remind me to give you a raise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say we take a cab on this deal? We find a place and we go dancing. Hey, Lorenzo. I brought Heidi over here to be a date. Gina's with Vinny. So Vinny takes Heidi and I go with Gina. Lorenzo, you don't get it. Gina's with me. No. She's with whoever she says she's with. I take what I want. I'm here, and I want her. Hey, you know, maybe you didn't notice this, but this is a restaurant, not a stud farm. Now, I'm trying to be nice to you because you're Sonny's nephew, but you're making it very difficult. Can you take me home, please? I'll take you home. Lorenzo, you can go to the hotel with Don and Larry. Come on, girls. I guess it's going to be you and me after all. I got an early day tomorrow. Maybe we should call it a night. We have a second, all right? I'll call and talk to Sonny, okay? Mario, stay with the girls for a minute, all right? Sonny, you got a minute? I used to take this kid to ball games. I don't, I, I don't, I don't get this one, Vinny. What are you, completely nuts? No, oh, oh, who the hell are you? I'm your nephew from Sicily, Uncle Sonny, and I've come to learn the business. <laughs> in Sicily and I'm gonna find out what happened. I mean, maybe this kid turned into a fruitcake since I know him. Maybe Dom sent him here to get rid of him. I don't know, but I don't figure. Sonny, I'm gonna let it go because he's your nephew. But I want you to tell him to never stand behind me, to stay where I can see him and to keep his hands in his pockets, all right? You got it. None of the circumstances, maybe it's not such a good idea that we share my place. We might kill each other over who gets to use the shower in the morning. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Let's do it. Are you sure you're OK? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Gosh. It takes more than an antenna-wielding maniac to put <laughs> Vinny Terranova on the bench, especially when he's out with somebody as pretty as Gina Augustina. Oh. I'm finally somewhere, Vinny. I don't know where, but it's not where I was two weeks before I met you, and it sure is a lot better than where it used to be. Gina, I'm trying to tell you something, and you're not listening to me. I've got a history. I'm mixed up in things. I've been in jail. That's not the kind of life for you. Just answer me one question. What? Do you care about me? Well, you know I do. That's why I'm telling you this. That's all I need for tonight. Sit and call with me for a minute, okay?
I know you got that for the ride home, but can I have a sip? Oh, sure. One lukewarm coffee coming up. Here. What's the matter? Oh, Alex used to throw plastic lids like that without looking. Said it was all in the wrist. Said it came from years in the job, sitting in parked cars till three in the morning. He said that they all used to do it that way. Yeah, with me, it's just a lucky shot. I'm just showing off. Here, take a sip before it gets cold. <sighs> Gina, what am I gonna do with you? I know it's not right, but... I do want to see you again. <laughs> Maybe we should ask Pete. Maybe we will. Seven style section. Day, presence, beautiful. How you doing, pale face? Not so good. We're into it with DeMont. You better tell McPike I need to set up a meet. Tell him to meet me in the vacant garage on High Tower in an hour. You got it, Vinny. is having a very busy day. Skirmish in Ducktown, dinner with the Chowder and Violin Society, and now a late date with me. Won't you get me any coffee? What do you want? I hate meetings after midnight in cold garages with guys I'm not partial to. Yeah, take this and throw this on the dash. What? Yeah, go ahead, just do it like you always do without even thinking about it. Is there a prize? Would you... Just do it. Well, I'll be damned. That's when they missed. What are you talking about? Cops. We sit around for hours doing surveillance. I guess we all flip our coffee lids up on the dash like that. You better tell the guys at Quantico to put that in the training program. I almost got busted doing that tonight. You know, you're right. Every cop or fed I've ever known sort of does it the same way. Yeah. You know, we got big problems with Cecil DeMont. Cecil the Diesel. The man's been traveling around on a bent axle for over 10 years. Maybe Sonny will finally do us a favor and tip him over. Listen, what I want you to do is check with the State Department and maybe the Italian police. I want you to find out about a guy named Lorenzo Steelgrave. Now, he's Sonny's nephew. He's a U.S. citizen. He was born here. He's lived here for six years before he moved back to Palermo when his father, Dominic, got deported. You want to tell me why? He's the king of the bent axle division. This guy is a real loose cannon, Frank. He just showed up this afternoon, and already he's making people stand back. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, then. I've got something for you. I want you to stay away from the blue-eyed princess. She's a civilian, and there are good reasons why it'll never work out, OK? Oh, this is great. Her old man, Alex Augustino, was a wrong number before he died. What do you mean, a wrong number? He was a cop in Brooklyn. He had emotional problems, and he killed himself. Not so. He went sour. The reason he was chewing on his gun barrel in the back of the closet was because the department was going to indict him. Internal affairs had him cold. He was on the pad. Did she know that? All I know is the department threw a blanket over it after he killed himself. There's nothing to be gained by dragging a dead cop's reputation through the mud. Whether he told his wife or not is anybody's guess. It's better for a cop to go EOW than to just go bad, right? Hey, that is life. Alex is end the watch, and you are hustling a lady who's played this scene before. I personally don't care what you do, as long as you don't end up a Ben Axel yourself. Because then my favorite fed, Frank McPike, would develop a problem, and that I would hate. Yeah, well, I'll keep it in mind. Oh, listen, uh, I may be making a cash run up to Boston in the next couple of days. I'll let you know. But I don't think we should bust it, because it'll focus too much heat on me, OK? All right. Call the lifeguard when it happens. I want him to log it. Hey, 
Hey, Vinny. How you doing? You're not still sore about last night, are you? Yeah, I'm still sore about last night. Did Sonny talk to you? Yeah. He said to give you lots of room. But I do things my own way. And I figure since I'm a steel grave, and you're some unmade guy from nowhere, it's in your best interest to settle out with me. You do things for me, I take care of you. Listen, I think you're a dangerous guy with a bad short somewhere. I want you to stay away from me. Otherwise, I'm going to give you something you're not going to forget for a long time. You got that? Yeah. I got that. Yeah, good. I wonder if DeMont kicked your butt. It's such an inviting target. You know, Mr. Rice? How am I doing? A good question. A better question is what are we doing? This guy is not long for the planet. <laughs> Sonny, you got a bigger problem, lounging around out there in pointed toe shoes. I don't want to add to your troubles, but your nephew just tried to recruit me. What? Yeah, right out there in the outer office. Come work for me, I take care of you, he says to me. What do I do, Vinny? It's, it's kid's family. I don't know, but you better flag him off before he hits the wall, I'm telling you. Yes, he's around. Shout to Cecil and Jackson Jackson, the other guys that work for him. I want our guys to recognize their people on site. All right, Sonny. Jackson, you're number two idiot down here, right? Well, I'm Lorenzo Steelgrave, and I got a proposition for you. In the next three minutes, you're either gonna get very rich or very dead. Man, you crazy coming down here. Here's the deal. You can't beat the Steelgraves, especially if they bring in Mr. Patrice from across the river. But I think I can change all that. You and I negotiate a peace. I put you in charge of all the Rastafarians. Mr. DeMont gracefully retires. And we all live happily ever after. So what's the catch? You pay me not 5% of your operation, but 15. I go back and tell Sonny you're going to play ball, and he goes off to war. Why would I do that? Because I'm going to show you how to steal all the money you need from Sonny. And I'm going to start with a cash run he's making tomorrow. I'm going to give you the route and the license plates. You hit the cards and take the cash. You give me 15% off the top and another 15% of everything you got going down here. And you're still ahead of the game because it's all Sonny's money. <laughs> and Cecil, you're just going to go for that, huh? Well, why don't we call him back here and ask him? Go on. Ask him. Hey, Cecil. Cecil, come out here for a moment. There's a phone call for you. It's important, man. Jackson here wants to take over your operation. You got a problem with that? <laughs> you dead, mister. I think he had that backwards, didn't he, Jackson? But it's no problem, because he just gracefully retired. <laughs> now, we'll see if you got the management skills to run this balloon factory. Did you ever want to just sail straight out as far as you could till you found your own island where nothing was spoiled? Where there was just a sea to feed you and a sun to keep you warm and everything was exactly the way it seemed to be. 
Can I trust you, Vinny? Can you trust me? Do we love each other enough to tell the absolute truth? Sometimes the truth is painful. The truth doesn't always set you free, Gina. Sometimes it can break you. There's a lie between us, Vinny. Don't ask me how I know, but it's there. I can feel it. Gina, I told you what I was. I told you I was wrong for you that I had a pass and a jail record. No, this is something that you haven't told me. It's that thing that makes you look away when we talk about our future. It's the pain in your eyes when we want each other. Last week, we were looking in that parking garage downtown, and we saw that blue Datsun. It looked just like mine. And I said, there it is. And you said, no, your license number is YKW985. Yeah, so what? Yeah, well, Alex was good at that, too. He could remember license plates. I mean, one look, and gee, he'd have it. And that thing with the coffee lid. Just like Alex. Rubber-soled shoes. That's all Alex ever used to wear, rubber-soled shoes. It didn't matter what they were, as long as they had rubber soles. You wear rubber-soled shoes. So I guess Alex and I had a lot in common. Cops wear rubber-soled shoes in case they get into some action. Cops remember license plates. They throw their coffee lids on the dash. Cops, Vinny. I lived with one for 10 years. I watched him look in the rearview mirror 50 times on his way across town, just like you. Cops. Don't ask me how I know, but I know. I can feel it. I love you. I do, and in a way, I wish you were who you said you were, a crook. Somehow, that would just make it better. I just don't know if I could take it again. I just don't know if I could make it. Hey, Gina, it's a lot more complicated than that. Now just look in my eyes and tell me it isn't so. I'm sorry, Gina. I was trying to have it both ways. Damn you. Goodbye, Gina. Don't hate me. Remember that I tried to walk away. I do love you, and I won't forget you. Across town at Dooley's garage. The dough is in it. You up to this? You look funny. No, I'm fine. What time am I supposed to get there? You get to Boston at 9 a.m. It's uh, 3.50. You leave here in 20 minutes. You roll in there as soon as the banks open up. Little Mo and Joey to battle meet you outside. You give them the keys to the car and you take a cab to the airport. Okay, let's go. Coming to win, oh man. Pull the truck across.
lifeguard told me you lost it. How much was the board? Over a hundred grand. I'm pulling it out. Steel Grave's got a figure for this heist. Oh, no, wait a minute, Frank. Now, let's think this out. I am not the only guy that knew about this run. There was a half a dozen guys in the garage, including Lorenzo. Well, that's another flash bullet, and your nutcake is not Lorenzo Steelgrave. Lorenzo Steelgrave got sent to harp class. They found his body in the surf off the coast of Sicily last night. So who the hell is he? They don't know for sure. Maybe a guy named Tony San Martano. And for years, you guys got more trouble than you bargained for. Why? Tony San Martano's half American, half Italian. He's a bandit in the hills of Sicily for five years, where he killed people without motive. Even the guys in the mafia in Sicily were afraid of him. He was judged legally insane and incarcerated in a mental hospital in Cefalu. Three weeks ago, he went over the wall. I think maybe he was a stowaway on that freighter, pitched Lorenzo, and took his ID. I wonder if Sonny knows. I don't know. But if he hasn't heard yet, you can't tell him. I wonder how you found out. It's got to come from Tom. Yeah, but you got to leave me in, Frank. You got to let me play it out. We got enough on Sonny, but now we got to shot at Patrice and Mahoney. And this thing is beginning to stagger around. I'm responsible for you. We got too many loose ends here. I'll tell you what, Frank. I'll call the lifeguard every two hours. I miss one call, you come and get me. Now, I think Sonny will cover me on this. Now, come on. How about it? Huh? OK. Thanks. You know, I got one other question. Is that your pajama top? Yeah, that's my pajama top. The lines begin to blur when I work with you, kiddo. You go down there all alone. You blow away Cecil, and you collect while his friends are just standing around picking lint out of their ears. Yeah. You collect the 15%, you just hand it over to me, just like that. There are conditions. You see, I figured without me, you wouldn't have money stacked up on your table there. You'd have bodies. I control the Mons guys now. And I'm thinking 15% might be a little stiff. After all, I did all the work. What are you doing? Are you trying to cut yourself in for a piece of this? All I'm saying is think it over. You had 5%. I'm willing to give you 7.5%. You're ahead 2.5%. The war is over. And I'll go down and handle the management down there so you don't have to go down and hassle with the brothers. Oh. Or I start bringing the Jamaican brothers across into Atlantic City. We parade up and down the boulevard. We make the tourists do the funky chicken. We heard business up here. You know what, Lorenzo? You got no deal. You got nothing. As a matter of fact, you don't have a place here anymore. You got that? Come on, bring your Jamaican buddies down here. I'll wipe the streets with them. You got that, and you get the hell out of here. You collect your stuff, and you get out! <gasps> Pin is out. And once I drop it, we're all history. Because where I come from, death is just another currency. I think you're soft. I think you eat too much good food. I'm leaving. The money is yours. A one-time payment. Think it over. I'll be in touch. But if you say no, I will show you the currency of death. <laughs> You can come up now, Sid. It's a toy. Lost it. You lost the whole 300 grand? Only I told you it was DeMont's guys. They hit me 20 there miles out no of There is no Cecil DeMont. Lorenzo killed him. back and tells us he's cutting into our tape down there. Then he threatens us and walks out leaving 160 grand on the table. He stands in the doorway and throws a toy hand grenade in at us. That was the good part. You should have seen Sid duck. You look like an extra in the sands of Iwo Jima. Yeah, but Sonny, don't you get it? There's no way that he could have organized those guys unless he had something to give them. What did he have to give them? He told them about the run. He knew about it. He split the take with him. You get your own money back, and now he says from now on he's part of the deal. Nobody would do anything like that unless they were crazy. Yeah, well, I don't think we ought to overlook that as a possibility. 
How about another possibility, eh? Vinny Terranova sitting in the front seat of a station wagon with 300 grand and a spare tire. He decides to pocket it. He makes up a story about the Rastafari and then comes down here and tries to get me to buy it. Well, Sonny, if you think that, you better take your piece out right now and shoot me. And if you don't think it, then shame on you for saying it. Okay. I had to try it out on you, see how you could take it. It's Lorenzo. He'd try anything. Hey, Sally. Where's everybody? Don't know. Sonny didn't say. Well, he's probably out looking for Lorenzo. He's a strange guy, Lorenzo. He comes in here this morning and wants to take me out right then at 10 a.m. Well, I tell him I can't leave, and he says, sure, you can leave. I'm a steel grave. Like, Sonny's not my boss. Yeah, he's a strange guy, all right. So he says, well, I'll just have to take somebody else out. See, he's got some girl stashed over in Queens. He's going to go over to her place and make her party. Well, wait a minute. When was it? I don't know. It was before I went in to see Sonny. And then he left about two hours ago. Found Lorenzo Steelgrave's body washed up on the beach. It's all over now, and we're gonna find out what happens to you, Samartano. Let her go! She dies, and then I tell Sonny you're a cop. And when he hears that, you die! You kill her, I kill you. You let her go, you can still cop a plea for soft walls. You still got a chance to become an old man, but you gotta make your choice right now. <laughs> Go wait out in the car. I'll be out in a minute. Go on. Did she tell you? I found a letter she was writing to you. But either way, you're through. Of course, maybe we can make a trade. You let me go, and I don't tell Sonny you're a cop. You see, because I don't care if you bust Sonny, because he's nothing to me. Nobody can stop me, man. Sure, they can send me back to the hospital, but I'll just run away again. You see, I'm not crazy. I'm just different. I'm smarter and meaner than all of them. Stay where you are. I'm gonna have to hurt you. You don't get it, do you? See, you being a cop just makes it easy. You can't kill me, man. You gotta arrest me. You can't even lay a hand on me. Don't push me. I was arrested in Sicily for killing one man, but I've killed over 20. I killed a man in a flop house once because he wouldn't stop snoring. And you can't do anything about it. I'm gonna walk over there, and I'm gonna take that gun away from you, and I'm gonna feed it to you. And then I'm gonna go to the car, and I'm gonna get Gina, and we're gonna have a little encore. Maybe I'll kill her. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll leave you both on the front lawn. <laughs> you see, Vinny, you're not a killer, man. You're just a guy with an attitude. You can't kill me. You can't pull the trigger even now. <laughs> Gina was just here. 
She says she's going to get in touch with you. She says she wants to take the chance. I love her, Pete. I know that. That's why you got to do the right thing. Hey, you there? I'm somewhere. Not where I used to be. I'm not where I'm going. Gina said that. She also said there was a place where everybody trusted everybody and there was no deceit. Sounds remarkably like heaven to me. Sure as hell in Atlantic City. I just thought you ought to know. Okay. Thanks. 